Hello everybody and welcome to Module 10 which is all about critical and analytical thinking. This is really one of my favourite parts of the course and I think that a lot of students do enjoy this topic as well. It might even make your brain hurt a little bit at times because it's really stretching your thinking um, but it is what I would consider to also be one of the most important things that we do here at university and that is to teach people, if we do our jobs properly, to be critical and analytical thinkers. So you'll find that a lot of it uh, relates to what we talked about in Module 5 with research skills and we started this process of evaluating information. We developed our information literacy skills and you'll recall that we used a particular framework of thinking to help us make judgments about whether information was suitable for use um, in academic writing or not. So the RAOC framework, uh, relevance, authority, objectivity and currency. So that comes into play here as well. It is part of what we're looking at here and certainly making judgments about authority, how trustworthy something is, uh, and objectivity. But uh, we also look at thinking in a more general sense, I suppose, uh, and we look at the way arguments are crafted uh, and how we can analyse things that are presented to us. So let's start by looking at the module itself this time. And just to be aware that you will uh, be doing quite a few activities from Cottrell. looking at critical thinking in action and something called logical fallacies. Now we do uh, an activity about that and logical fallacies uh, sounds a little bit intellectual I suppose and it is actually a science is to look at how arguments are crafted, what, what is the logic that's employed and then how might that logic break down, that's the fallacy part. The way we look at it in this context is in a very um, easy to understand way, a very practical sort of application and just get you thinking about how people do try and persuade us to a particular point of view and you'll recognise that some of these techniques we use in our everyday life uh, where we make sweeping generalizations about a group of people or a situation, um, bandwagon statements where we assume that everybody thinks the same as we do while we all know that that's not going to work, don't we? Well, do we? Um, maybe not everybody does think the same as you. You'll see these sorts of techniques used a lot in politics, uh, in advertising and just in the media in general. So it is quite interesting to really break down arguments and see how they're formulated and there is an activity there as well um, where you get to uh, apply your understanding of those concepts. Now the other thing I wanted to point out is that we look at the six thinking hats. Now I know some of you have already done this in essay writing and some of you may have come across this at school or in some other context. Uh, the reason that we do it in this subject is that we, we consider that it is a really useful way of being analytical in your thinking, that it can help us to view a, a topic or an issue from different perspectives and understand that there may not necessarily be one truth here or one perspective which is the right one, but just different ways of thinking at that particular topic. And it's also useful for us as academic writers and thinkers to be aware of red hat thinking, which is where uh, arguments are put forward more from the position of emotion, of feeling, of passion, personal opinion, rather than uh, any sort of real evidence. White hat thinking, on the other hand, is more a factual way of approaching a task, uh, a more objective way of presenting information. So there are six hats and they all uh, give you a particular way of thinking and it, they are all very useful to us uh, as academic writers. Now, just forgive me for scrolling a little bit quickly here because it might make you a little bit seasick. I just wanted to take you down to activity 
Now this is going to be really important uh, for you because it's going to give you practice in uh, applying the things that you've learned in this module and you will be analysing a newspaper article, just a short one here from the Courier Mail and there are a series of questions here uh, that you will be asked and really you have to have done the module to fully understand how you go about that task. Now the other reason this is important is that in Learning, Port in Learning Portfolio B, rather than a series of self-reflections this time, you're actually going to be given a task very similar to this one where you are going to be asked to analyse a newspaper article. So the explanation for that is given at the end of the module here. Um, but let's just take a look on Moodle so that you know exactly where you have to go. So you'll see here that there's a newspaper article for analysis. This is in module 10 and this is what you will download. This will be the newspaper article that you will analyse for Learning Portfolio B. And then for the questions that you will respond to, you simply go to Learning Portfolio B uh, and you look for the relevant questions which will pertain to that newspaper article. So look, it will make you think uh, and it, you might have to read the article a few times. Um, you, you'll certainly have to become very familiar with the questions and don't feel bad if it does take you a little while to really come up with what you think are good answers here. It, it is something um, that is reasonably challenging. Uh, a common mistake that students will make is that they tend to be overly critical when it comes to judging the authority or the trustworthiness of the sources of information. Now it's not academic writing so we don't expect it to have formal referencing. That doesn't mean that it doesn't quote its sources, that it doesn't make it clear where it's getting its evidence from. It doesn't mean that all of that evidence can be dismissed. Uh, as not being very credible. So just, just a bit of a heads up there because sometimes there is that tendency to think, oh well it's not academic writing so I don't believe anything that it says. It's not quite as simple as that um, and newspaper articles can often be transparent in telling you where the information came from. Not always, sometimes they really make very vague statements and there might be some vague statements in this one too, but certainly um, there are cases where they are telling you where the evidence came, uh, has come from and then you can make your own judgments as to whether you think there might be some validity to that information or not. So good luck with that particular activity. The good news is once you have completed that part of Learning Portfolio B, you have actually completed that portfolio if you've been keeping up week by week. So that's really exciting. Uh, and then of course that is due at the end of week 11, uh, you will upload that to uh, Moodle as you did with Learning Portfolio A. So please take advantage of the feedback that you were given for the first portfolio uh, and give yourself some time to polish your answers and make sure you're keeping within the word limit, the overall word limit, uh, and then you'll be in a good position to actually submit that final piece of assessment. So I really hope that you enjoy this module. I hope that it does stretch your thinking. Um, maybe you even will see the world in a slightly different way as a result. Who knows? Good luck with all of that and certainly good luck with Learning Portfolio B.